Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Uh, well, we of course carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Robins Club Rugby. Lots of great competitions coming up for you tonight, but of course big thanks to our partners on board with us here. Score Energy Drinks, as you know, Score is on board with Western Province Rugby and the Western Province Club Rugby Sevens. And uh, you can win yourself a case of score tonight, so make sure that you don't go away because, in fact, it's a triple up competition that continues the score, the bash shoes, and the set of Cape Rugby TV masks. All that coming up tonight. Of course, big thanks also to MCAM 24 Hour Pharmacy down in the corner of N1 and Durban Road. It's great to have them on board. And of course, they've been making such an effort uh, helping people during the COVID period. And of course, Thorburn Security Solutions, your one stop shop for all your events security. Paul True, as you know, is of course former uh, Sevens coach, uh, SA Sevens coach, and uh, he's of course head coach at UWC, and we've been trying to get Paul on the line for a while. He's going to join us tonight, so we'll catch up with Paul True, UWC uh, head coach. And then we'll catch up with Janine Langer. She's the chairperson of St. George's Rugby Football Club, and we'll find out what the Lulu boys are up to. Um, and we're just hoping to get Eric Liebenberg on the line with us as well. Eric is, of course, a head coach of Paul Rugby Football Club. And as you know, of course, Paul's very, been very busy behind the scenes helping in the Paul community. And we'll speak to Reginald Pfeiffer. And you, of course, remember we spoke to Reginald last year. He is uh, from Lamotte Wanderers. And those uh, two clubs, of course, uh, merged. Joining me now back on the line from uh, Lamotte Wanderers, Reginald Pfeiffer. Reginald, nice to have you back. Good evening, JP, and good evening to your viewers. Nice to be back. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Uh, haven't spoken to you now for about two months. Um, I believe that you guys are busy behind the scenes. Yes, definitely, JP. Uh, we've been active. We've been starting our planning. Uh, the boys want to keep the ball on the roll. So we're not laying back. And, and waiting for restrictions to reduce down. We're getting innovative and finding new means to keep our conditions up. Yeah, talking about conditions, I believe that uh, you are being creative and, and getting the guys to, on their own, in uh, of course, responsible for themselves, go out uh, in the mountains and, and stay fit. Yes, JP. Um, We've started uh, about, let's say, in December, getting the boys to utilize the landscape and the mountain trails that we have here in Lamotte. So we, go, we have got the guys running uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sunday mornings. And we gather at the Lamotte Community Hall about half past six. And then from there, we go past the uh, fire station, up the mountain trails, and when we come down, we used to utilize the Glenwood uh, gravel road. So it's a nice five to six kilometer uh, job to get the guys conditioning up to, uh, up, to, up to standard. Are the guys turning up for that? I mean, it's obviously very social. It's very casual. Yes, uh, surprisingly, JP, uh, since we've been utilizing social media and advertising and showcasing the training sessions uh, on our Facebook platform, uh, guys have been starting to, to join us. Uh, each session consists out of five to, to ten guys. And then we have a separate uh, program that we run where the coach uh, actually gives some players to do individual training. If they don't feel comfortable joining the group yet, they can condition themselves at home or in their own space. So we got two programs running at the same time. Right. And I believe that um, probably looking after that is, I believe you've got a new strength and conditioning coach that uh, has been hired at... Um at, uh, well, I don't know if hired is the right word. Lamont Wanderers has, of course, got Donovan Blau involved there now. Yes, and I'm happy to announce uh, the appointment of the Noven Blau to our, our ranks. He's a really inspirational uh, coach in person who has been involved in rugby for a while. He's been involved for 10 years with the uh, Western, Western Cape uh, Sport uh, School. 
and he's been involved with clubs like UWC, Silver Tree, and and Rocklands for a short stint. He since moved to Lamotte, and now he approached us and actually said, "Listen here, guys, I want to assist you. I got the passion for rugby, and I know I could uh, influence you guys in a positive way." And within the two months that he's been uh, active. We've seen our membership growing and the ethics and the culture of of the guys really changing for, for the better. So uh the Noven Blau, welcome. Welcome to us and we're here to let you know that we appreciate you, coach. Uh Reginald, what comes next for you now? We know that obviously we have to wait to see what SA rugby and Western Promise Rugby say about future games and practices, and that's all Still a long way to go before that, but behind the scenes, what, what, what's what's next for you guys now? What was next was actually start to involve uh, the youth again. Um, we're looking at at guidelines how we can introduce the young young players systematically. As you know, working with with young guys, you. Your club takes on a lot more responsibility than working with the seniors. So by broadening our, our database and our in our squads, we actually want to start focusing on on incorporating the youth to then get that that if I can call it a value chain towards our our senior squads. That's fantastic, Reginald. Um... Uh, we're looking forward to getting a lot of photographs uh, when the time comes and uh, that membership base. And you say Facebook is the place to find you. Yes, definitely. I can tell you, viewers, go check out Lamotte Wanderers and yeah. Lamotte Junior Rugby to learn about uh, what's going on in Lamotte and what we what our guys are up to. Um, you'll see our trail runs. You'll see our beautiful mountains in the landscaping. So, yeah, hopefully... When we get visiting teams, we can arrange some social uh, practice sessions or hiking sessions so that you can also join uh, the Lamot community when you come visit. Sounds fantastic. Well, we hope that everything, of course, goes uh, according to plan in terms of our health and safety protocols. And uh, we'll say to you and the team and the players and everybody out at Lamot Wanderers, stay healthy, stay fit. And, of course, uh, follow all the health and safety protocols. Yeah, thank you, JP. And thank you for, for having us on the show again. Thanks, Reginald. There we go, folks. Um, Reginald Pfeiffer, Public Relations Officer. But very instrumental, of course, behind the scenes there at La Motte Wanderers. And uh, as he said, they're growing the membership. Isn't that fantastic? During these difficult times, when you would have thought that... Um, things are quieting down clubs are growing well those that are or let's say those that are active clubs are growing so if you want to join Lamotte Wanderers just go and find them on their Facebook page go and do a search there for uh, Lamotte Wanderers and as he said uh, they are busy um, signing up new members anyway folks we'll take an ad break when we come back from the break we carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Mums Club Rugby don't go away Welcome back, folks. Cape Rugby TV. Uh, nice to have you along. Right, as we've been saying, a lot of clubs there have been staying active. They've been engaged. Uh, not only engaged, they're also coming up with creative ways of speaking to their players, keeping their players busy. And, of course, everybody's chomping on the bit to get into uh, 2021, waiting for all those announcements and waiting to see when, when they'll get back in action. Joining me on the line now, and he's been with us on the show on a number of occasions, Eric Liebenberg, head coach of Paul Rugby Football Club. Eric, uh, great to have you on the line. How are you, Manier? Well, it's all, JP. Not too bad, uh, considering, of course, we know things are rough out there for everybody. Um, are you safe? Are you and the players? Are you all okay? Yeah, no, we're all fine. Uh, we've had a couple of guys that has been self-isolating for a bit uh, with family and friends that had the, the coronavirus. But luckily, in our squad itself, we were, we were quite clean, quite safe. So that's yeah, quite nice. It's definitely one of those things now that... Um, that that uh, is out there so much that it is something that we all know somebody who either has contracted yeah. it or in isolation. Um, it, it's uh, quite. It just know. feels like it's like getting close to home, isn't it? It feels like when you when it first started, you sort of 
well, close by, but now it's like on your doorstep. You know, my neighbors yeah. got it and it's sort of everywhere. Yeah, I know. So, absolutely. yeah, we're all keeping clean, keeping safe. But, yeah. So tell us about the training program that you guys have got. We know that the season hasn't started at Western Province and it's going to be a long time before there's any any formal activity and we await, of course, all those announcements. But you've been, uh, um, uh, you've been engaging with the players. Yeah, I mean, we're fortunate enough to have, uh, I've got quite a few guys in the squad that's got their own little training facilities, like little studios, etc. So we've been trying to get uh, small groups of three or four guys, depending where they train, um, just to keep active, you know, just try to, you know, once a week, we do CrossFit once a week, and we do try to train once a week with, with someone. Um, we had a touch rugby the tournament where we played three or four guys in the team. But the toughest thing is to keep the guys together, you know, keep them motivated. But it's been so long that there's been no rugby, there's no nothing on the horizon, apart from the email we received yesterday. Um, but there's there's not, nothing concrete saying that we're going to play rugby. Yeah, the last we heard, it was going to be delayed till June. Um, and now they say we can start training on the 8th of Feb, but that's only conditioning. And the guys doesn't do conditioning anymore. They've been doing literally conditioning for the last six, seven months, building up to hopefully playing rugby. So now it's just it's prolonging the, the, the process. To keep them motivated, though, tough. you have been asking the players, I believe, to send in videos of themselves. That's correct. Obviously, the young guys, they love it, you know, because they keep they're showing off in the gym, and so it's quite nice. So we, we put a little prize on it for the guys sending to the best video uh, doing a workout. Uh, so that's worked well. You know, we had a... But 80% of the guys sent in some videos, so it's, that's been working well. Yeah. Now how do you, um, now you say you've got a prize for the videos. How do you adjudicate this prize? How do you, who decides what the best video is? What do you judge it on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I mostly try to keep it funny, you know, so keep it funny with the same aspect of, you know, when I see them work out. So uh, we've got a little panel of, we have, we've got a social committee in the club of a five players, senior players. So, so they just pick. I mean, I don't get involved in that. I just give the ideas, and they, they run with it. So, um, so yeah, that's 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 where we are. Um, Eric, if you're talking about leadership, though, five players in the team that are, are, are taking responsibility for social media, they are obviously stepping up to the plate as well, then to help people um, um, uh, stay connected and help uh, keep the call it the chias amongst the players. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's the main reason we we start this committee because we we identify those five. Well, there's more than five, but there was five key players in the team that a lot of the guys respect. One of the guys has been playing, I think it's like 73 matches for Paul. You know, obviously, so he's been involved for quite some time. Um, so, like, you know, they just try to organize small things. Like, tomorrow night, there's a small bribe for some of the guys, and the next week, there's a bribe for some of the guys. You know, we, all, we obviously try to keep the social distancing and all the regulations really for, for COVID. But it is important still to have that activeness. You know, yeah. we, we need to connect and stay connected as a team and the players. That's that's so important. Now, you, you talk about conditioning, um, uh, strength and conditioning. Obviously, it, it must be a... Is it, is it difficult to, to make that connection? I mean, you also spoke about CrossFit, but bringing the CrossFit, the fitness, to make that transfer of, of strength and conditioning into r real rugby, is that something that's a concern for you? Or is it is it reasonably easy to do? A lot of play, a lot of coaches talk about that you have to be rugby fit. You have to be. Uh, it's a different type of um, of, of fitness. Yeah, no, obviously, definitely. I mean, doing conditioning, uh, CrossFit, uh, it makes the body strong, but it's not it's not giving the rugby fitness. You know, they're talking about we can start training on the eighth of Feb for four weeks, but only conditioning again. You know, you need to implement your strategies, your game plan in the way you train. Yeah. At the moment, we're focusing more on speed, agility, uh, and stamina, which is obviously important to have, but it's not that contact, making a contact every five minutes, get up on the ground, get up making contact, putting a tackle in, and also playing your patterns, working the way you should be working. So, you know, obviously, we're losing a bit of time on that, but we try where we can in. That's why we play the time. We sort of put some different way we play and, and see what we can do. We know that, of course, we have to wait for all these announcements. We saw, we did see the message, uh, I think, in this week that the 8th of February is a, yeah. a potential return to training scenario. And it, 
and we know that that still happens under those uh, those regulations. And and as you said, it's only for strength and conditioning. But have you got any um, any sort of uh, activity calendar planned for 2021 yet, or is it too too early to say? Well, we had a we obviously had an activity plan. You know, we had a, a program which was going to start on the 8th of January, uh, working up until the 24th of February when we were supposed to have our first friendly. Um, so basically, all we had to do now is just move that along. But with the Message we received, the email received for the four weeks and another four weeks, and then hopefully in contact. So obviously we've got to really look at things and, and see what we can do. But honestly, it's it's so hard to get the guys to the club now for strength and conditioning. For conditioning. That's all they've been doing for the last eight nine months. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like we weren't, we weren't allowed to make any contact. So we've got to think of new ideas constantly of getting the guys motivated, getting to the club, and actually just want to be there and not be concerned about, oh, we've got to run again today, oh, we've got to be conditioning again today. It's sort of it's quite, quite hard sometimes. Yeah. Eric, uh, it's difficult times, uh, but uh, we see that you guys are doing at least something to keep the guys connected and have a bit of fun, Yeah. Uh, even though it is difficult. We'll leave it at that and we'll say to you and everybody else out there, stay safe. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see you on the park in some sort of shape at some stage. That'd be fantastic, Jay. The guys are keen. We're out for it, so we're looking forward to a season. Um, it's going to be good. The guys are, yeah, we, we're motivated. So we're... hopefully, hopefully soon, you guys get to see. Fantastic. Hopefully, we'll get some of those videos from the from the guys and uh, see w which is your your best player video. Thanks, Eric. There we go, folks. Eric Liebenberg, head coach of Paul Rugby Football Club, and uh, well. The guys are doing the very best to stay positive out there and stay connected. Of course, difficult. It is difficult times. Folks, as you know, on a weekly basis, we do a MCAM 24-hour review. These are public reviews, of course, that come from you, the viewer, either from Facebook or from Google. And it's always fantastic to take a look and see what it is that you have to say about MCAM 24 hours uh, service. And uh, of course, these are reviews, as I say, from the public. Now, this week's review comes in from Wesley Castle. And Wesley uh, gave MCAM a five star rating. And he kept it very simple and it says, Top service, nurses are friendly and helpful. Now, folks, that's in fact exactly what MCAM is known for is just how helpful they are. And we know that MCAM have, of course, been helping the public during the COVID time. It's been very difficult, in fact, but um, that's uh, what, uh, what we expect. And uh, we know that when you go to MCAM, you are going to get the very best service and helpful staff members. So as we know, of course, every staff member at MCAM 24-hour pharmacies, they're here to help you with all of your pharmaceutical requirements from the minute that you park to the minute that you leave. And MCAM staff are... As I say, they're there to help you with whatever you need, whenever you need it. Um, that's, of course, the promise. Or as Mr. Malach and MCAM uh, likes to say, uh, the gold standard. They, in fact, strive for the gold standard of service um, at MCAM Pharmacy. And you can see the MCAM store behind me over here. So if you drive down the N1, uh, whichever direction you're going in, just on the corner of Durban Road, you'll see MCAM Pharmacy. Now, if you drive down there, of course, the parking lot is just behind MCAM. It's free parking. I love that. I love the fact that I can just drive in, park, and then go inside the store. And I quite often like to go upstairs to the coffee shop uh, whenever I go and visit at MCAM. Um, but, um, you know, from the time that you walk in there, there's always somebody who stops you straight away and says, can I help you? Which I think is absolutely fantastic. And they're open, of course, 24 hours a day, which is really great. And that's really what we've, over the years, come to uh, know and expect from MCAM. Uh, folks, we are going to take an ad break. And uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Still uh, some uh, fantastic interviews coming up as we uh, speak to the, um, well, many of the coaches at Western Province Club Rugby. Back in a sec. Welcome back, folks. Cape Rugby TV. We're carrying on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Um, and, of course, you remember last year about, well, not this time last year, but constantly during the course of the year, we spoke to St. George's. Uh, Janine DeLange is the chairperson of St. George's Rugby Football Club. They were very busy in 2020. And, of course, as we know, not holding back, um, not allowing COVID to stop their planning for 2021. Janine DeLange joins me now. Janine, nice to have you back. Are you well on that side? 
we all good. Thank you, JP. Healthy and strong and keeping safe. That's the main thing. Yeah, we spoke to you a couple of times last year in 2021. You were working nonstop, making sure that everybody was being looked after, the players, and not just the club. You were also looking after uh, friends and family of the club, the neighborhood, the community in the area. Are you still busy that, like that busy? Yes, correct, JP. We're still busy with that. We're feeding about a thousand people on a weekly basis in the different areas here in this rain. We, we have ladies working very hard to keep the community happy and we support them. You are absolutely amazing. I hope that everybody comes to you every day and sends you lots of messages and gives compliments and gives credit because you really are incredible. You and your team at St. George's. Um, tell us a little bit about that. In a, in a, in a nutshell, what, 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 what sort of is the next thing that you would be doing um what is the daily connection that you have to have with people to make sure it keeps happening okay we have a group of ladies we have a group of eight about 18 ladies working in the community and we do our communication via the whatsapp group and um on an everyday basis yes um speaking to them um giving them the food parcels on a saturday uh, for them to do the cooking and so on, and also other families we reach out to. As I said, Janine, you're absolutely incredible, the work that you do. I, I really hope that everybody re recognizes that. But I believe uh, St. George is turning 80 this year. That's correct, JP. And this COVID is putting uh, actually a kind of a damp on everything, but we're still working very hard to make it a success we can't let the 80th birthday just go pass unseen well we'll keep talking about it we'll keep telling everybody that you're turning 80 it was not so long ago in fact maybe it was about 10 years ago that i remember coming through to a um it might have been your 70th year and possibly the launch yeah. of one of the new jerseys at the at the i think it was at the strand civic Yes, at the Strand Town Hall, yes, JP. Yeah. And we are planning another big event also in the Strand Town Hall on the 31st of July. We booked the Algernese band already and the wall is booked. So we're just waiting for COVID to slack down a bit or how are we are going to take it further? I'm going to have to pull out some of those old photographs because I remember us filming on the, on the day there. Can you believe it? How fast does time travel? It, it's quite incredible. And the incredible thing is that you've still got some of the same leaders, some of the same management still supporting the club. Yes, def definitely. And we're very grateful for them also to give us input and advice on how taking things further. And that's so much appreciated that people don't go sit down and let other people just carry on, but they keep on supporting. And we really appreciate that. Um, especially with this event coming up, we need as much info and input to make it a huge success again. Talking about events that are coming up as well, you've also got a big boxing match coming up. Yes, that's for Merwan, um, for his a medical um, boost for him. Merwan that will David's, be in March. of course, your coach at St. George's. Yes. Um, he's our coach, and um, that's to watch his medical bills and things that will be in March years. And um, what's his name? Manuel and Tariq is very busy practicing, and I see the advertising is quite a bit. So, so you're yes, talking about we two hope club rugby awesome. legends. Two club rugby legends, Tariq van der Ross and uh, Manny Williams, um, who both come from the Strand area, and they've decided to give up their time, but not just their time. It looks like they're also going to be giving up some of their physical attributes here and they're going to get in a boxing ring to fight against each other to raise funds for the coach. That's correct, yes. And they are putting in quite a bit of effort. I think that's three or four times they must practice in the week. And it, 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 it's crazy. It's now, crazy. I would like to see this event, yes. We're definitely looking forward to that. And hopefully the, the COVID thing plays ga plays poor. But I have to ask you the question. You know, Manny Williams has been playing, playing for you for a while now, and he always tells me that he's going to hang up his boots. Now, I'm, I'm wondering if he's going to actually hang up his gloves after this boxing match, or do you think that they might turn pro? Oh, I don't know, Manny, because there's also a baby on its way from Manny's side, so... 
we will have to see which way it's going to turn, either in rugby or coaching or boxing. We'll see from there. I'm, I'm absolutely sure that once the bug is bitten, the boxing will will be there. But never will he hang up his boots. That, that, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about yes, the players. Yeah. Your connection with the players, we know, of course, at the moment, there's no rugby, there's no games, there's no training allowed. We're waiting for the restrictions to to get a little bit easier. We're waiting for everybody to, to follow those guidelines. Are you at least able to communicate with the players and stay in contact with them and, and tell them to keep fit? Um, JP, that's one of our big um, things that we try our best to do via... Um social media and WhatsApp to keep in touch with them. I believe about 70% of our players are already busy practicing either by gym, um, by themselves and trying to get fit. We all, our players are also sometimes very slack a month or two before game time, then they st actually start physical and all the training and things. So I'm thankful and grateful for those who are busy already getting themselves ready and Looking forward to the year. Now, we've got a new thing starting on our side. It's called the Lunchtime Derby, where we're talking about derbies. And St. George's has been mentioned a couple of times with big derby names, the big challenges. What would you say is the biggest derby for St. George's? Okay. the in the, By us, it's definitely the Yaldeberg and the Strand, um, Strand side. Yeah, we're sharing the field as well. We in Strand, so those two are very big. Lots of supporters are coming out. These gazebos are set up early morning to book up spots at the back of the field and so on. So yeah, those are the two big ones. St. And George's then don't forget in... Macassar as well. So you've got three derbies on your side: St George's Helderberg, St George's Strand, and St George's Macassar. And we've got a lot of conversation there we're going to be talking about that and of course we're hoping to get someone from St George's to tell us about these derbies and how far back they go and some of the big memories it definitely go back way back eh? um, quite some time back because I mean I'm already about 20, 20 plus years by, by the club and physically involved so it comes before I'm getting involved with the club already absolutely Janine, Anyone's. is there anything that you need? Anybody who's watching the show right now, um, is there anything that you need on your side? Again, I'm assuming if people want to dr drop off um, anything, is there is there anything that that, that uh, the spectators or corporates can do? Um, yes, JP, I uh, um, said this morning, it, this is difficult times for everybody outside. Um, the dry ingredients, your thin food, veggies are always welcome. And there's so many people that knock at my door as well for something to eat. So, yes, we will appreciate it. And every contribution will be much appreciated. Janine, we'll leave it at that. And we'll say to you and the team and the players and the fans and everybody in that area, stay safe and uh, healthy. And, and we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you so much, JP, for having us on the show as well. Appreciate that. And let me know where I can buy tickets for that boxing match. Of course, Manny Williams, Tariq van der Ross, in the ring, fighting, raising funds for Coach Marwan Davids. I'm looking forward to seeing that fight. Thank you. Yes, we'll definitely get some tickets and keep you posted. Fantastic stuff. There we go, folks. Janine DeLange is, of course, the chairperson of um, St. George's Rugby Football Club. And, uh, well, it's like I said, when I opened that segment not holding back, staying busy, getting, staying involved. Quite incredible. And we're going to be following the progress of St. George's during the course of the year, as we always do. We'll tell you about that boxing match that's coming up. We'll follow up on their 80th birthday. And we'll, of course, tell you about some of the other activities that St. George's are busy with. Folks, don't go away. When we come back from the break, we carry on talking about what's happening in the world of West Holmes Club Rugby. Back in a sec. Hello everybody, welcome back. Cape Rugby TV, we of course carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Brahms Club Rugby. It sounds like that's my, become my sort of stock standard interview now, uh, at least intro to, to every second, because that really is what we're doing. We're trying to keep the clubs connected um, and uh, keep you, the club rugby fan, 
um, interested and connected with what's happening in the world of Western Women's Club Rugby. Of course, we know things are difficult at the moment. Joining me on the line now, the head coach of UWC, Paul True. Paul joins me on the line now. Paul, nice to have you on the show. Hi, JP. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Paul, I think it might be a first time that we've got you on the show. Certainly, it's the first time in the online um, arena. Um, let's get the basics out the way. Are you healthy? Are you safe? Are you in one piece? Yeah, um, JP, so obviously it's quite a challenge, uh, uh, you know, coaching a team you know, during this pandemic. Um, but I tested, uh, I think just over a week ago and tested negative. Um, but yeah, with these kind of things, you know, you just never know. I think you just have to continue following your protocols, keep your distance, sanitize, um, and just try to, to minimize risk. Um, but yeah, luckily at this stage, you know, I'm still healthy and uh, we're just trying to keep our squad on the field as well. Talking about keeping your squad on the field, I mean, it's been a little bit upside down for, for, for Varsity Cup and Varsity Shield. It was on, it was off, it was on, it was off. Uh, it must be difficult for you keeping, well, keeping the players motivated to begin with. I think, you know, when, um, just to give you some, some background, I mean, when I started, you know, I was appointed in August last year and I didn't even have like a, like a single uh, online uh, discussion, you know, with the players and meetings, like all the other universities did, and maybe some of the clubs, um, you know, because our players obviously have different challenges. I mean, they don't have data, they don't have access to facilities to train, like most of the club players. Um, so we basically only started when we actually got back to campus, uh, and that in, it, in itself was a challenge. Um, so besides the SA rugby protocol. The, the Western Province protocol, you know, we also have our internal, you know, uh, university protocol to get back on to campus. Uh, so we eventually did. We were training all over Cape Town uh, up until I think October. And in November, we started, you know, started training at, um, you know, at the university. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, I, I must say, it's, it's really a challenge, you know, keeping the players, um, you know, on the field, uh, you know, when everyone, yeah. any players got a some. You've got to take that as a COVID symptom, so you've got to treat it, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, with all the precaution. And um, but I must say, we we have a brilliant medical team that we put together, um, and they're doing a stunning job to make sure that our players are safe, uh, and you know that we can keep them on the field for as long as we can. Um, Paul, I mean, you've coached all around the world, and you've 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 coached at the absolute highest level um, uh, from. Olympics to World Cups, uh, inter international championships, countries against each other. But the Varsity Cup also comes with a, a certain pedigree. It's not just universities playing. It's not just casual, um, a casual rugby. You've got some serious heavyweight coaches and really, really good teams up against you. Yeah, I, I must. I must admit, uh, JP, I don't quite know what to expect. You know, so I, I have to just follow the things that I've always done in the past, in it, and that is just to control the things that's within your power, and yeah. it's the controllables. And you know, so we put our focus and our energy, you know, uh, in that. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, there are coaches who are so experienced, you know, coaching varsity cup, understanding what it's like, uh, you know, dealing with students in their normal, you know, day to day lives. And um, yeah, it's going to be a big challenge for me personally. Uh, but like I said, you know, I've got some very good people around me. Uh, you know, our our chairman, uh, Nick Cock, you know, and um, we've got Clement Trout, who's doing our admin, uh, you know, for, for the university. Uh, and like I said, I've, uh, you know, with the, you know, Lionel Langenhoven, he's still involved with the club. He's going to be the first, you know, head coach of the first team. He's also assisting with the scrums. Um, we've got Nikki Fulyun. Uh, you know, former Hamilton's coach is, uh, who came in as a as a as a line art coach. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, Bubbles, um, uh, uh, you know, who's our our S and C. Uh, we've got you know uh, uh, Jenna Bam, who will be appointed as our our sports scientist. Um, yeah, I think we've we've really made a good team together. You know, it's uh, our high performance department. You know, their uh, staff uh, is assisting us. You know, from a scientific and from a sports science perspective. Uh, SNC perspective. So I really think we've, we've managed to put, you know, a, a, a good system together, but now it's just making sure that we can keep our players on the field and we can start playing and start playing some practice games because that's going to be a challenge in itself. I think it's very exciting. I mean, we just see UW, UWC is just getting stronger and stronger every year. And it, 
even I mean even the facilities are just getting better and better and uh, more world class every year. Um, I mean right now, in fact, I believe that you guys are busy upgrading the field, uh, upgrading the the stadium a little bit as well. Yeah, I think we we, we we were a bit disappointed at first when we heard that you know obviously they're gonna start you know working on the on the track and on the on the field and we won't be able to have any of our home games actually on our home turf. Um, but I think once that facility is going to be done, it's going to be world class. And I think I mean you know JP, it's not just something for the university, but we're also serving the community at large. And I think you know for people to come back to the university and experience that kind of facilities. We're really looking forward to that. Um, just before we continue, let me just mention, uh, uh, obviously, Ricky Peterson as well, because I, I forgot to mention his name. And you know, Ricky, obviously, yeah, you know, you know, uh, winning the Varsity Seal with CPUT. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a pleasure to have him on board as well. You know, and these guys, is, they, they, they've been involved in club rugby for so long. I mean, you've been doing this for a number of years uh, and doing this show. And I've always watched it. I've always, you know, watched club rugby, but I've never experienced it actually being involved with club rugby. And it is just a different kind of ball game. But I really enjoy enjoying it. You know, every single day when we drive into work, it is just a different kind of experience as opposed to, you know, dealing with and, and coaching, you know, the Stormers or coaching Western Province or coaching in the international teams. It is just a completely different ball game. And uh, I think it challenges you in a different ways. And uh, I can't, like I said, and you also said it, and I can't wait to start and to actually see how all the hard work that you put in, how that is going to transfer, you know, to the actual games. I think it's fantastic. I mean, some of the names that you mentioned there, you know, all through and through in their blood, club rugby, you know, Ricky Peterson, Nicky Phil Yun, Bubbles. Um, Lionel. 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 I mean, we can go through it. You know, Ricky was at Tigerberg, Lionel's at Kells River, um, Nicky at Hamilton's, yeah. you know. I mean, the list is just endless. Nick Cock, who himself has been involved at UWC for a long time, um, involved with Western Bronx cricket. I mean, these are guys that are just through and through. And Paul, the one thing that I've noticed about UWC is that that I find absolutely amazing is that so many players will play for UWC, and when they're finished studying at UWC, when they're finished, some of them will carry on playing club rugby. And even today, we will find them playing as the call it the sort of high profile players at some of the clubs in Western Province. Um, and, and that's that's fantastic. And I think it's a uh, that's exactly it, JB. I mean it's uh, we've we've said it as a coaching team also, you know, we, we we're not just there to improve rugby at UWC. We also want to tap into our communities and making sure that you know, that we're giving back to the communities as well. So whether it's uh, through our players, you know, former players going back to their clubs and back to their communities, and whether it's coaches coming in and maybe, you know, if there's something they could learn from us, we would like to give back to them and just open our doors, you know, for people to learn. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's it's definitely something different for me, you know, and it's an opportunity to give back to the communities. And, and, and like I said, you know, I'm just enjoying it every single day. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Paul, we're looking forward to following your progress and uh, and the players and finding out what everybody's up to. We know it's difficult times at the moment. Of course, this is last year and this year is a season of unpredictability. Who knows what's going to come next? But we know that uh, UWC are in really good hands and we really can't wait to, to, to see what you come up with next. JP, uh, so I think, um, you know, just... Just observing the players and seeing them train every day, uh, I can just sense you know these players are hungry for success. And I've said it in a different interview as well. I think you know we have a responsibility as an institution, you know, uh, to create hope. And I think you know uh, with the legacy that Chester started, you know, and I'm you know Lionel took over and then I took over. I think you know there's something that we need to create that's that's really unique. Uh, you know, and to create something that people can look up to. And um, I think that it's going to be our responsibility, every single person within our setup, to make sure that we can give, you know, aspiring young players, you know, that kind of hope uh, to become something in life. You know, they're not just rugby players, but just in life. And whether it's to finish their academic studies and whether it's, you know, just to follow their dreams, you know, and to follow their heart, uh, we would like to do that, you know. So... Uh, let's hope we can do that, you know, as a as a, as a club, as a as a team, as a management, as players, and uh, we're looking forward to, you know, to hopefully to entertain you once we hit the field. Absolutely, Paul. We leave it at that. We'll catch up with you again soon. 
Thank you, JP. There we go, folks. Paul True, head coach at UWC. They just can't get out of the starting blocks at the moment because of the COVID thing, but almost there. We're, we're just waiting for it and really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen at UWC. What a team. Did you get those names that he mentioned there? The players, his management team, all through and through club rugby people. And that's really fantastic. We'll take an ad break. When we come back from a break, we carry on talking about what's happening in the world of West Rams club rugby. Welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. We carry on talking about what's happening in the world of West Rams club rugby. Um, in a minute or so, we're going to show you some uh, um, information about our um, conversations that we've been having about derbies that are coming up, or not coming up at least, uh, but that have been going on for years and years. And uh, we thought it's time that we take a look at and bring to you some of these conversations around derbies. Very popular topic. We posted it on Facebook and we got so many suggestions about the derbies. Now, before I go there, you can, of course, win yourself a case of score energy drinks. All right. So all you need to do if you want to win a case of score energy drinks together with a case of Bashu's cool drinks, as well as a set of Cape Rugby TV masks. Now, if you want to win this triple hamper, the score energy drinks, the Bashu's cool drinks and a set of 24 Cape Rugby TV masks, then all you need to do is SMS the word SCORE to 33090. Just SMS the word SCORE to 33090, and that'll put you in the mix to win a, a case of SCORE, a case of Bashes, and, of course, the uh, Cape Rugby TV masks. And congratulations, then, to last week's winner, Frederick Buertis. Frederick, uh, somebody from Cape Rugby TV is going to be in touch with you shortly, and uh, you can arrange for a collection of your SCORE energy drinks. All right? So congratulations. Right, as I said, uh, derbies is a big topic and we uh, did a little snippet on Facebook we thought we'd bring you some of those highlights uh, Jamil welcome to Cape Rugby TV live nice to have you on the on the line there sir thanks for having us JP it's a pleasure to be here and Muhammad Spearman of course no stranger to Cape Rugby TV Muhammad nice to see you on that side how are you Hi, JP, and uh, thank you for the invitation. I think it's something new for all of us uh, and looking forward to have a little ch chat with the, with the people out there. It's a lot of derbies. We posted this, this question on Facebook a week ago where we asked you, the club rugby fans, the Cape Rugby TV fans, what derbies you think are the biggest derbies in Western Province? And we got about 150 comments of a multitude of derbies. And of course, one of the big derbies that jumped up that a lot of people spoke about was the RAG. And for those of you that don't know about it, and I'm also here to be educated myself, the RAG is the historical match between Young Stars and Caledonian Roses. Uh, Jamil, let's go to you first. Am I right? Is that a classical derby? And it is between Young Stars and Kelly's. Yes, JP, correct. Um, it is... Uh classical, classical derby started in 1936 already um, and it has survived all these years with obviously a few breaks in between uh, but the rag itself is quite classic and uh, going back, I don't know when we're going to start in terms of the history because I know Muhammad has also got information uh, but just as by way of an introduction in, um, in 1936 both Stars and Kellys played in the Maitland Union. It was called the Kensington Recreational Union. Now, the idea for the RAC actually came from Stars members, but we, 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 we can do that again later. Um, what Stars decided is to organize the match against the strong teams. And whoever beat Stars, those are the team, or that is the team that will become the opponent in, in, in the rack. Now, the strongest team in Western Province rugby at that moment was Roslands. And the strongest team in the Maitland Union was Kelly's. So we arranged a match against Roslands, and everybody thought Roslands was going to run over well, Stars, but Stars beat Roslands. Is, is this now, the second one is we arranged then a match in the Maitland Union against Kelly's. And lo and behold, Kelly's beat the Stars by three 
three points to note. And so they became officially the star's uh, opponents in terms of the rank. I am just blown <laughs> away by how much conversation we are going to have, how much storytelling we're going to have. Muhammad, we're talking here about a derby match that goes back 90 years. My maths isn't so good. 80 years. Yeah, it's 85 you years. 85. So 86 years today. You didn't play back so, in 1936. So, so JP, yeah. You know, I would have wished they. Um, if I if I read the stories of all the people um, um, that have sent information through to me, yeah. um, I am I am I don't know I am getting goosebumps as I'm sitting here. Absolutely. Because yeah. you're speaking about lots of uh, uh, you know prominent people in terms of uh, the legacies that they've left behind, um, and we're not even when you speak when you speak about the 1936 you 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 don't even speak about the Kasim Jabas at that time because you're speaking here about guys that was there before Kasim Jabbar and uh, uh, Miley Scruder and all of those people. So, you know, a one hour might do an injustice to the rag itself, as I said, and as I mentioned to you before, because the names that will that, that, that you will hear is of is people, you know, where our listeners and the viewers can 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 attach meaning to it. It will be the, the great grandfathers, their fathers, you know, um, the brothers um, that has played for Kelly's or for Stars. Um, what is interesting for me was why the two clubs has really come together and what that stood for. And and that is the interesting part is we, as community clubs um, um, uh, per se, both these clubs had the communities at heart. And this is the reason of why the rag was, was, was created back in 1936. So folks, if you are watching right now, uh, please join us for the lunchtime derby next week, Tuesday at 12.30. We hope that you've got Wi-Fi. We hope you've got time in your day to watch the stream with us. And I will say to Jamil, I'm looking forward to the conversation next week. Yes, sure, JP. There's such a lot, as Muhammad say, there's such a lot to say and discuss. But uh, the main thing is, it is very, very interesting to see the the far-sightedness and the foresight of our uh, forefathers who actually started this uh, this initiative. So it would be very interesting. Um, but I will <laughs> let you guys. I will say goodbye to all of you, and I will let you uh, let you also prepare some photographs and maybe some videos. We're not turning this into a massive show, folks. It's purely conversation. And so we'll see if you are watching right now. We'll see you next week, Tuesday at 12.30 for the Lunchtime Derby. Thanks, Jamil. Thanks, Muhammad. There we go, folks. Just some of the highlights of the conversations that we're having on the derbies um, and the historical derbies that are, are, have been played for years and years in Western province. Um, folks, we will again see you next week, same time, same place. And uh, we look forward to having you. Stay safe out there. Remember, always wear a mask, practice the social distancing, and of course, wash your hands regularly. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.